Ancram. 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 Yep. Hello. At an awesome place up in Ancram. Ancram. <laughs> Ancram. Is this Columbia County? Yeah. First Colum town over. First town in Columbia County. Um, we just got done at the Sunflower Oil Farm, uh, Hudson Valley Sunflower, Hudson Valley Cold Press Oils. Got a great tour over there and uh, beauty of our a gem in the Hudson Valley. And now we are at Hill Rock. It's backwards. It's a backwards. Hill Rock Distilling. <laughs> you can read it. Hill Rock Distilling. Okay, we have to figure out how to. Founded in 2010 uh, as a farm distillery, uh, meaning that they uh, everything is sourced locally or it's grown up, grown up, grown here. The only thing that's not, which really doesn't, not really in the product, is the peat. Peat can really only come from Scotland. Is that correct? It, it, it exists everywhere else, but Scotland is where we know it tastes good, and so we get. That's why we have the industry for it to, yeah. to harvest it. I'm sure they're not. Yeah, Scotland and Ireland. Ireland mainly for fuel, Scotland for whiskey. Cool. So what, what's the first one we're tasting? Uh, Solera aged bourbon, uh, high rye content bourbon, uh, aged in new barrels, and then in a Solera system, finished in Oleros with sherry casks. So explain the Solera system, because I thought that was really cool and neat. Um, yes. We have some pictures that we'll post on yes. Facebook of, of the operation. So Solera aging, as opposed to standard aging, where you would fill a series of barrels, age them for a number of years, and then dump them all together. Uh, the Solera is more progressive, where we uh, partially empty the barrels and then fill them up with younger whiskey over and over over time. So every barrel should have um, molecules from every batch of bourbon we've made. And each new batch that we put out in bottles should be uh, comparable to the batch before. I like to sort of compare to like yeast yeah bread makers that have that same yeast strain for 10 years yep. they just take some yeast and feed the yeast take yeast and feed yeast yep. and it's pretty much the same thing yeah so if somebody gives you 10 year old yeast make sure you take care of it and don't kill it <laughs> <laughs> so all right that's delicious oh. and we have these at aroma time by the way yes the solera uh, bourbon we have no, no, no. <laughs> That's good stuff. Yeah. So we just went on a tour. Yep, so we just got a tour. They do have an official tasting room here, um, which we're in right now. Highly recommend coming, it's beautiful. Here's the tasting room, it's the staff. There's Anatole from the Peru uh, distillery. And uh, because you can't smell it when the That's our lineup of what we're drinking today. We're tasting some of the lineup. So has anybody had their product? Anybody that's watching right now, have you had Hill Rock? We've had it for what, about four years now, probably? Maybe a little longer than four years. And how we found them was actually at one of the tastings in the city. Remember that building that has the steps, the spiral steps going up and down? They were in a back room and they were not even, it was, they were Was it the indie, indie tasting? The indie tasting. Indie, ten, indie tasting. This was years ago. Yeah. I remember saying, wow, what a great, a great product. I, I don't even know if they were in the bottles at the time. I feel like it was in. So, so the neat thing about Hill Rock is that they actually malt their own barley. And that's a process of where you sprout the bars. So you have to have a you have to basically have to have an upstairs a room that you can lay all the grain out, uh, hydrate it, and just correct me if I'm wrong here on this, hydrate it, start the germination process, and then be able to stop the germination process and then dry it and roast it or add heat to it for a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. And not many distilleries at all do this. So if you're buying even single malt scotch from Scotland, those guys don't, many of those distillers don't malt their own barley. We have one um, from, where's it at, that, that has our own malting room. And the whole distillery shuts down for like... Is it Wolfburn? No. It's not Wolfburn. It's like the whole distillery shuts down for like two, three weeks while they're doing this process and nothing else is done at this distillery. Um, I'll, I'll think of the name of it. They also did that Shiraz barrel whiskey, the single, single malt that we have. I'll think of it too. Yeah. Um, uh, long... Um, uh, you're on the right track. I know. Yeah, yeah. So... 
that's one of the neat things here, and that hasn't been done since Prohibition, correct? You're the first distillery to do that since Prohibition? Uh, we're the first one to build a malt house on an estate distillery since Prohibition. On, okay. And so most distilleries don't have that luxury. They're relying upon buying malted barley from somewhere else, sometimes from Canada. New York does have more. Do we know how many malting, malting houses are in New York now? Malting houses, not distillery folks, malting houses. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure exactly, but I know New York would definitely be one of the So players. maybe about 10 years ago, one of the other distilleries was making a product uh, and they were buying their malted, they were making a single malt, they were making their malted, buying their malted, malted barley from Canada because there was nothing at the time in New York to do that. But now um, there are some places and of course Hill Rock. One of the big things that I always tell people is when you, there's so many distilleries out there now between, uh, between New York and all across the country, that when you pick up a bottle of something, you really need to read the labels very carefully <laughs> because a lot of distilleries and some local ones too, rely upon a company called MGP out of Indiana. And uh, what they do is they just buy barrels of rye or whiskey already made. And, and if you're a chicken farmer, I think you can buy chicken feed. And if you're a veggie burger company, I think you can buy veggie burgers <laughs> from them. And like, it's a one stop shop. <laughs> and they're buying barrels and they're bringing it to their place and they're aging them themselves, which may be a year, two years, two weeks. Some of them are cutting it with fancy water, doing whatever, and then putting it out. And you look at this local product, New York State product, or whether, wherever it's from, they can do this in Kentucky, wherever. And you have to look at, read very carefully on the label because it's going to say this bottled here, but distilled here. Um, if they're, I think that that's the law in New York. They have to say where it's. And some one of the distilleries wasn't quite doing that. Um, they were labeling it as a product in New York. And they got, I think, they got a little bit of trouble for that. They definitely got scrutinized for that. So any of us here could start this technically a brand of whiskey tomorrow and go buy barrels that somebody else did all the work in a big, big factory and slap our own label on it. Um, that's not what's happening here. That's not what's happening in a lot of great distilleries across our state. But that's the first question to ask when you go to a distillery is, are you actually distilling the stuff on site here? Are you buying from somewhere else? Uh, now, when you open up a distillery to get your stuff brown requires aging in oak. So if a, a place just opened six months ago and they're serving brown whiskey, chances are they didn't age it just for six months. Chances are it was aged, aged previously and they bought the barrels. Some, some distilleries are making that transition where they're actually saying, okay, we bought our first couple rounds, but now we're actually distilling our own. Um, the neat thing about Hill Rock was right from the very beginning, it was their own and it was uh, local, local products. I've been looking out at a field here that had, um, had grains growing in it. Um, so that's a really cool thing. It's a true farm distillery. All right, what do we have next? Uh, so the second one is a special finish on the bourbon. So it's the same celery aged bourbon aged additionally in Sauterne wine cast from France. Ooh, Sauterne. So it adds a nice sweet finish to it and just kind of puts a different oh. spin on our uh, traditional bourbon. So it's aged your traditional way, and then you, you yep. put it in Sauterne cask, which is a French Bordeaux dessert wine. Uh, Sauterne made from Semillon grapes, uh, preferably Botrytis grapes, I believe it has to be. And Botrytis is where they get noble rot, where, they're, yep. where they introduce, or not introduce, but they wait in the field until a fungal or fungus is introduced to the grapes out in the wild and starts eating up and concentrating the sugars, and that's a dessert wine. Sauterne is, is definitely an awesome treat to have. So this is finished in Sauterne cask. Yes. And this is the Solera. A sweeter little. Yep. Yeah. Sweeter. So good. And I don't mean sweet because it's not sweet. Yeah. But when I say sweeter, I mean it's hard to say bourbon is fruitier. So it's got more of a. Um, I know it's backwards, and I don't know how to fix that. I know there is a way to fix. You figure that out Paul before. Paul Cousley knows. Paul. Uh, Paul knows. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, it is interesting taking the same whiskey mm -hmm. and finishing it different. Yeah, we we'll make a. Yeah, especially when we do the rise, we have three or four finishes. Mm -hmm. You know what? It's almost like. It's almost like. You can almost get more impact done at the finish than maybe before. Like more. I don't know, tweaking it or, 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 or taking it somewhere or more impact on the whiskey maybe in that, that last 
three months or two months yeah. when it's in the in the finishing cast than, than before. Yeah, I mean, well, the whole before part is new barrels, smoothing it out and creating a right. whiskey you want. But you can alter the finish of the yeah. with a very short amount of time. Yeah. That's, that's... So Anatole, yep. what we're tasting right now, the last two we tasted, are those available as a regular release that people can go into a liquor store and buy, into a wine shop? Yeah, the, Sol the Solarian's bourbon is definitely our flagship and should be available anywhere that carries it. Uh, the Subturn finish, um, probably a little bit harder to find, uh, but all of the finishes are available at the distillery. Okay. Um, what are the hours of the distillery? What days do you open here? So we do tours and tastings by appointment every weekend. Um, we'll also do them during the week, um, usually between 12 and 5. But, okay. Um, if you just give a call to schedule an appointment, we'll fit you in whenever. Excellent. Are you group friendly? Like, what's the oh, largest? We'll do up to probably 20 in a group. Okay, um, good to know. Anyone can come, even if they're not of drinking age, they just can't drink. Um, dogs can come too. <laughs> Pet friendly, Fido friendly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Fido really, friendly is important these days. Yeah. Mary, it is very yummy. Mary, very, very, very yummy. For the, uh, for the dogs. <laughs> well, how do you decide on that? <laughs> is it 21? I don't think they make it that long. So. You got lower that. You got lower that. <laughs> so, in the area, if people are coming here, mm -hmm. what, where else do you recommend they go? I hear Sloop Brewing is, what, 20 minutes away? Sloop's close by. Um, oh, yeah. Suarez Brewery, Chatham Brewery, Millbrook Winery, Millbrook Winery, Millhouse Brewery. So those are all within 20, 30 minutes from here. Yeah. So yeah, so you can make a great day trip up here, folks. You can really a great day trip. And if you want to take the Aroma Time van with us, reach out to us. We'll be happy to do a uh, private party for your birthday or whatever. Round up six, eight, ten, twelve of your friends. I will drive up here. I will take you and show you the places that we buy from, just like we're doing in Italy in November. Uh, that Italian wine trip that uh, we're doing for uh, eight days in Italy, we're doing all the wine wineries that we buy from. That's going to be a great time. And it's still not too late to sign up for that. Go to our website, aromatimebistro.com. You'll see a link on the top that says uh, travel to Italy with us November 5th to 12th. Um, there are some seats left on that. We have 20 people going with us right now. So if anyone wants to travel to Italy, or if you're, we have one group that's already in, going to be in Italy, and they're meeting us for the tour. So if you're in Italy, you're going to be in Europe at that time, and you want to meet us, that's totally flexible as well. All right, next. Next, we're going to move on to rye. So this is 100% rye whiskey, which is rare to find these days, aged in two separate brand new barrels of increasing char. 100% rye. Right. <laughs> you said he's in a darker chart? Yeah, so it starts off in a chart 3 and then goes into a chart 4. So the increase in the chart helps add caramel and vanilla to kind of smooth out the baking spice. You get a lot of cinnamon, nutmeg, and clove from the rye. So that your rye is 100% rye. How yes. common is it in the industry to do 100% rye? To my knowledge, there's only a handful, maybe six or seven. Okay. 100% rye whiskeys out there. Now, if, you're, if a distillery is buying from MGP, it's a 95.5 blend from what I understand. Is their standard, is their standard. So if you have a rye bill that's 95.5, that's like the first inclination that they bought a barrel from MGP. Ooh, that smells good. Now, you said the charring is more in a rye than the bourbon? Uh, yeah, so we use the char three standard char for uh, all the whiskeys. The rye then goes into a char four, which is heavier char, just to help get that caramel and vanilla that smooths out the spice of rye, because 100% rye Nashville can get really hot, um, if not aged accordingly. What did, what do they char the barrels for? Is that as a... It's to caramelize the sugars in the white oak. Uh, which help go along with the profile whiskey and soften the whiskeys up. Uh, really, any spirit that gets aged in barrels like that. Um, and the more you char, the darker the whiskey gets, which is so our, our rye is also I might have very been dark. I missed what this was. What is this is 100% rye. Okay, which means 100% rye. Okay. So, folks, just so you know that when they put bourbon into a barrel, uh, now, is the all rye has to be, is it a one time use for all American rye as well? Uh, at least initially. Initially, okay, so. When a distiller is putting rye or bourbon into a barrel, it has to be a new charred barrel, which means that barrel has to be burnt inside. Go on YouTube and look up 
making a making a, a bourbon barrel and charring a bourbon barrel. It's really an interesting, great process. And they have, of course, some time lapse videos. We posted one last year. They got thousands of views uh, instantly. And so they're going to char the inside of the barrel, burn it basically, char it, and that helps with the aging process. So the rye we're being told right now is a is a stage darker than the than a traditional bourbon. Yeah. Well, at least for the barrels we use. For the barrels you use, yes. The heaviest charred barrels we use go for the second barrels on the rye. Okay. Mm. It's delicious. We're huge fans of rye. Yeah, I love rye. It's my favorite. Yes. A rye, nothing beats a rye Manhattan. Mm. No. Rye Manhattan is, yeah, with good quality good cherries. Quality, yeah. so, I think it's a Brooklyn now. Is it a Brooklyn now? Is a Brooklyn. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> I call it Jamie's Ryman Head. <laughs> Those All right, there. excellent. So uh, next, again, we're going to do a salt churn finish, uh, except this one on the rye. But I have to say, I don't think I would make a rye Manhattan with these. <laughs> I mean, they're just so good. Like, they don't need, you know, they don't Because rye can be, rye can be hot. hot. And yeah. that was like so smooth. The that I used to drink. Yeah. That's a good. That's good. So I'm told this is a this is a double cask. Yep. Uh, this, this is this would almost be a triple cask. Okay. So this is what we call our special finish rye whiskey. Uh, this one happens to be in sauternes casks. So after we the two pork cask one. Yeah. So after the two brand new barrels, it then sees a third barrel, which is, again is a sauternes wine cask from France. This again adds sweetness, a lot of honey notes, and again just smooths out the whiskey. So when you make a sauterne cask, when you make these special special ones, how many bottles are available for the market? Uh, we usually do anywhere from about 150 to 300. Um, some of the small releases around you know 120 or 50 or so we keep here. Um, the port finish, which we've done the most, uh, we've sent out to the public. Um, the Madeira we did initially, uh, we're about to release a second batch of that. Of the Madeira? Yep. Um, but then some are, so the Madeira, the port, and the Sauternes Rye, we've done larger batches. Um, one of the smaller ones we did was a Pedro Jimenez Sherry Finish mm -hmm. Rye. That was about 120 bottles that we did an open house for. Instantly sold out that day and we haven't made it since. Um, that one I'm pretty sure never made it to a store. So now can you can you keep using these barrels over and over again? The yeah. finishing barrels. Yes. The last finishing stage. Barrels. We can use them I think maybe three or four times. Okay. Um, Until it's too diluted for Yeah, and then it won't have the same effect. Right. Um, so we uh, we constantly have sources of getting new barrels to replenish those. And we keep on hand uh, finishing wines to keep in them to make sure they stay hydrated and fresh. Okay. So how many states is Hill Rock available in? Um, not counting control states, we're in seven and DC. Um, okay. We're about to be eight with California. California's week. opening up. Just about to, yeah. Awesome. Um, so, so what have, states are you in? Uh, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Georgia, Maryland, and DC. Okay. And then we can ship directly to states like North Carolina, Oregon, Idaho, um, that are control states. But okay. Not so you wouldn't necessarily. Nothing do, international. Not yet. No. Any talks of international? Any uh, desire? Sure, we'd love to. Yeah, we're just uh, we're still pretty small. We're uh, about to double in size in terms of production within probably the next year, year and a half, uh, and then broaden the market. So, just across from us is the barrel room. We walked in there and we were like, whoa, the smell was so intense. Um, barrels everywhere. How many barrels do you have aging at one time? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, probably around a thousand, at least, I would say. Um, wow. A lot, yeah. There's, uh, besides the warehouse, there's, uh, I think, three or four containers with at least three or four hundred in them each. Wow. Uh -oh. Um, we've tried to mainly stick to now 53 gallon barrels predominantly, we still have some 25s and I think we just uh, finished up consolidating the last of our 10 gallon barrels. Okay. So your used barrels. Yes. Can somebody come here and buy a used barrel? Like yeah. a consumer? Yep. So we usually have 
10, uh, we're actually probably towards the ends of the 10th. I think they actually might be all stacked over there. Um, but we usually have 25 gallons available pretty regularly. Uh, we also, every once in a while, we'll have a 53 gallon, um, but that's usually larger than personal use. <coughs> um, but we do have some of these uh, five liter, two, three, five liter. Yeah, you can turn that to the five liters. I find my new whiskey bus. <laughs> so we have, we have some of the right. small ones of whiskey bus. I think it's a proper size. Let's see that. So what, what size is this barrel? Uh, I think that's a two liter. Two liter. That's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. What do these go for retail? Uh, I think brand new, they're a hundred. Or from from the distillery used. Yep, and okay. uh, we don't have to use anymore, but we have new ones that are uh, branded and ready to go if anyone wants to. Like a personal. Yep. Get a beer in it, anything like that. Yeah, but this would be too. There's small the charring inside. Really I don't know if you can see the charring, but it's in there. It's all black. All right. That's cool. We have one left. Yep. Excellent. And that's a single malt. Yeah. Now, we hear a lot about the single malt because this gets awards, or it has gotten good awards. Yeah, this one's done very well. Um, I was going to so this is keep that going to go. 100% malt barley aged in four different barrels. Starts off in a brand new charred oak barrel, then into one of our used bourbon barrels, which is traditionally how the scotches are aged. So we wanted to give it that kind of traditional scotch feel. A used bourbon barrel? Yep, from uh, our Slayer. Wow. And then it goes to a uh, double... We're going to drink. We're going to do this one because she's got some of the rye left. Gotcha. Uh, double finish in Pedro Jimenez and Oloroso Sherry casts at the end. All right, let's see if Americans can make a single malt. I told you you have to have some Scottish in your blood. I do. I don't, you do? I then you qualify. You, you are qualified, sir. So. <laughs> you are qualified. Ooh. Love me some whiskey. Can you prove it? I need to see a... <laughs> this whiskey's really and good. Is that Mary? Mary, how are your lamb shanks? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's hard to overcook lamb shanks, Mary, so come back and join us. That's a single malt, folks. Mm. Mm. The smokiness in there, really nice. And the peat. I definitely recommend going and getting a bottle if you're a whiskey come fan, here, bourbon. Come taste. Is, yeah. Does it cost to uh, come and do a so tasting? So it's uh, $20 for a tour and a tasting, but the tour fee is waived. You buy a bottle and you get a um, Hill Rock and Great oh, Glass wow. to nice. go home with as part of the tour and tasting. Nice. I'm going to buy this one, of course. Beautiful. Excellent. Great. All right. Thank Anything so else we need to say about Hill Rock before we... No. <laughs> Awesome Thanks for the hats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and you can, of course, get it at Aroma Time. <laughs> Aroma Time, we have. We have three of them. We have three of them. We're happy to uh, give you a taste. More as well. <laughs> and uh, make you drink out of it or just have it neat like, like this. I mean, these, we're happy. We had all these neat today, and they're just so smooth they're and so delicious. Smooth. Yeah. Very, very impressed with Hill Rock. Um, definitely go out and look for a bottle of it. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah, you're welcome.